Hi everybody! I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 30 minute soul journey session for a client. I'm going to go ahead and read the goals and then I'm going to get started here. All right, so goals are I'm actively working at removing blocks, achieving clear communication with guides, and removing old structures deep in my body. I trust you to follow your guidance and how best to aid in my self work. Cool. Okay. Hmm. Moving blocks, clear communication with guides, removing old structures. Awesome. All right, can't wait to see what we find out. I'm gonna go ahead and relax and get connected. Wow, I feel a, a little bit of exhaustion and there's, lots of numbers and they're going round and round and round in a circle around a pillar and there's numbers like 45 23 77 62 99 <laughs> and they're like round and 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 round they go there's like a million different numbers here and they seem to be double digits not like they're like 101 or 2075, <laughs> but they're like um, double digits, like um, 11, 44, 72, you know? <laughs> so they're just all over, just going around and around in a circle. I, I grab one and I'm looking at it and it's got little wings. What number is this? Let's say 72. I know I just said 72, but I keep thinking 72, so let's just go with it. It's got little wings on it. It kind of reminds me of Harry Potter with the keys, and they have the wings, and he has to get the right key to open the door. It's like they have little wings on them. I have you, number 72, and you have wings. Hmm. Nothing's changing just yet. Oh, yeah. I really want to feel change. I, I, I experienced that in your energy field. So you are really ready for change. You're really ready to access some new stuff. But it feels like I'm not going anywhere very quickly. Like I should be going somewhere faster than this. And even though I have this number 72, it's not really revealing the type of information that I hoped it would. This is you. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, people who see repetitious numbers. 22 is talking to me today. It's been following me all day long. <laughs> but what does it mean? Like, how is 22 actually benefiting our life? If it's just some sort of mysterious number that unlocks literally nothing in our, in our awareness or psychic development other than it's just kind of a cheerful experience. So 72 has got nothing in it. It's like literally an empty void. Although it doesn't feel like it. It feels like I just haven't unlocked its mystery. There's so much information here. But I keep telling you, no, 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 no. Let's go see something else. Let's just get out of this uh, round and round and round in circles, numbers. Let's go beyond here. Let's go find something else. Okay, you're, this all has to do with your head, by the way. This whole space is connected to your head, mental body, third eye, crown. And it's a bit stagnant, like it's not, I don't feel like I could just create a doorway and go through it. I mean, I should be able to just create a doorway, any old doorway and go through it. But it's just, it just doesn't, it doesn't know how to expand. It doesn't know how to go to the next level. And all the energy in here is kind of like a, a net and you're the fish caught in it and you can't get out of it. So you're not really going anywhere. And so that's that's what where I'm at right now. So obviously we want to clear that energy out so you can start to expand, expand beyond this point. Okay. So I say, you know what? I've got number 72. I've got this key. And I just magically appear a wooden door and it's a Harry Potter style door. I mean, I really feel like I'm in that moment. So I just put the key in to unlock it. And I don't feel like all the numbers are chasing after me or going to go into me <laughs> like knives or something. No, they don't care. So I just opening the door with number 72. 
and it's a very slow process. It's almost like time is standing still. So this should take just a second, but it takes like a year and then two years and then 10 years and then now 99 years and then 2000 years. And I still <laughs> know we're even close to unlocking this door. Why though? Why? I ask why? <laughs> hmm. All right. <sighs> This is the next thing. There's a really thick jam here in the throat. And there's a little bit, there's like an energy aggravation happening right now. So I'm going to get a little bit weird. <sighs> We're just getting our way through it. Like everything feels like really clenched up and tight even. Okay. Almost through it. Almost through it. Just relaxing it on down. Man, whatever this throat thing is, it's kind of powerful. And it's a throat thing connected to a mental body thing. <laughs> and the throat and the mental body, it creates actually a handle. So the next opportunity to open a door, almost like opening a cabinet. It's kind of like one of those types of handles. Hmm. You have got some tricky stuff going on. Everything that I am led into has to do with psychic development. I mean, this has to do with growth, progress, expansion. And it's got a stagnation to the energy. It's not just letting me be free in here, which means it's not just letting you be free in here. It's hard. It feels really difficult. And it's not actually this difficult, but something in your energy field has created the illusion and, and then it's become reality, okay? So when I open this handle, I like I open it up, I see a black cabinet. And I wanna be so excited to just dive in. Okay, cool, we're, we're getting somewhere. But I feel stagnation again. I feel like I'm stuck getting nowhere. I'm running in place, like I'm going nowhere fast. Just a moment here. I'm like literally feeling this out. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to just. I'm gonna have to start moving you. We gotta get you jogging in place. So I'm doing that because we gotta create energy activity in order to kind of loosen this up. It's like a stiff muscle, and there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of movement actually at the upper top of the neck, and then the the back of the head here. I feel movement there again. Throat feels a little bit jarred. Man, I just want to break through this thing like immediately, but it's a process. Okay, I'm just letting all of this, you're still running in place. I'm just letting all this stuff do its thing. And then I'm going to, I'm going to see what, I want to see a bigger picture. I want to see if there's another way that we could tackle this differently. Um, so... So the next thing, that, that's still going on over there, but here we have you, and I'm having you look into the mirror, and I want you to start communicating with yourself. <sighs> this part of you. And when I have you look into your reflection in the mirror, there's literally no reflection looking back. And when I ask you to speak to yourself, you don't have anything to say. And nothing flows through. It's like a dam that shut the water down from freely flowing. And I tell you, because this is true, when when things get tight in the throat, we have to just say something. We have to just say something. And when I teach people how to get open, open up to psychic ability, um, and they're trying to understand what their spirit guide or higher self is saying, and they're trying to logically figure it out, or they're trying to sense it out, and it's just nothing's coming because we're judging the information. We're trying to decide what it might be like or sound like. Well, that's not being psychic. Um, it's just got to flow, right? It just has to flow. And sometimes we just need to say something, okay? Um, my spirit guides is saying that I should wear red today. I don't even own anything red. I, I don't, why would they say that to me? Perfect. Actually, that's perfect. Because when our spirit guides and higher selves talk to us, it's not going to always be sensical. So we got to understand why in the world would you just say that? that your spirit guide says you need to wear red today? Why in the world would the, would your spirit guide say that and it doesn't make any sense? 
now you get to the next layer and for whatever reason people can start to say well they're actually showing and starting to think about this event that happened and there was the, this red and um, I felt really deep about it and it kind of bothered me and I thought about it all day long and I'm starting to pick up that it's that I've been kind of wearing this red color because I've been taking all this experience from this event with all the red in it and they're wanting me to reflect on this whoa you're serious so you're telling me you just bam came out with some random thing that you feel your spirit guide just said has we have no idea why and then when you close your eyes and get try to try to actually answer the question as to why it would come out that way we're starting to connect dots and it's starting to make a deeper connection because psychic experiences is a deep self-reflective self-discovery emotional feelings-based event it's a thing it's like a really exciting thing that happens and so when I see you in this image with the mirror and it's time for you to express something to yourself, it kind of reminds me of this as though you're not really sure what to say to yourself. Well, you have to say something, just anything. Um, I don't know, like a squeaky babblefish. I mean, I don't know. You got to say something. <laughs> we don't know, but you have to say something. That's how you get throat working. Got to say something. But you want to say something very specific. Um, and you show me this key, this number 72. And you show me all the other keys that keep going around in circles. And you show me that they're making a puzzle. And you're showing me all of this. But you're like totally muted. You can't speak about it. But you're just showing me all of this stuff. Um, and then you're saying, but what does it mean? I say, okay, stop looking at it like you're a mathematician because psychic stuff isn't one plus one equals two. Psychic stuff is one plus one equals 17 bajillion. We don't know what any of it means until we get actually connected to our, our heart and emotional senses because we have to feel the meaning. Kids don't make sense of the world. Wor world. They don't make sense of the world um, logically. Kids make sense of the world through exploring the way it makes them feel. So psychic uh, development is totally getting us back to our inner child because kids are so creative and they're exploring the way the world makes them feel. And through those feelings, they develop smarts, smarts about life. And it doesn't start with learning one plus one equals two. It doesn't start by just learning the words that we use in order to communicate with each other. There's so much feelings going on in there. And the feelings give us access to the wisdom and the ability to grow and develop in this world. Psychic gifts, I really feel strongly, psychic gifts are most powerful when they develop within our feelings. Not within just seeing or collecting a lot of clues and trying to piece them together as a human would. We have to get away from all the human needs to, to decide stuff. And we got to get into our feelings and let the feelings feel it out like we're a kid. All right. Okay. All right. This is kind of, um, so I still see you looking at yourself in the mirror and I will say this is creating a lot of energy movement. It's even, it's not just, it's the throat is becoming self-aware. Mental body is becoming self-aware that it, it, it needs, it, it sees something more in itself that it needs to explore. But I also feel the heart opening up a bit more too right now. And when I see you're looking at your reflection in the mirror and exploring the concept of just speaking, you feel kind of like, um, but I want, I, I want to use my smart mind, my intelligent mind with my emotions and psychic gifts. And I just want it to be like that. So I feel like my psychic experience can use my intelligence. So just give me a minute here. So, so your adult mind is necessary to work with your childlike mind. Your childlike mind needs the adult mind in order to do the psychic ability because it feels safer to work with adult intelligence when really the entire experience needs to be magical childlike experience. Okay. Okay, this is really getting jarring. Like I got like a um, like uh, my mouth is just like wired shut. 
And it just can't talk. I just can't talk. You just can't talk. And I see a little girl start to reflect in the mirror. And she looks like, uh, is it John Benet Ramsey? Is that the little girl that, that died? The really adorable, uh, she was like a, a little prom queen. She kind of looks like her. And this is really important. Because I am meant to really bring to life your inner child and bring back to life, okay? And this is actually bringing up a lot of stuff within you. And it's just, it's really um, pulling up a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's like we're unearthing something that died within yourself. And so I'm just like letting it come out and it's sort of coming out like a big giant wall that went straight through all of your chakra bodies and we're just sort of lifting it up and out but it's kind of pushing itself out and it's very squirmy I mean it's like oh <laughs> it's coming out and so it's doing that oh it's still happening it's still happening it's still happening uh, <laughs> it's still coming out okay let's see Okay, this this is the next big thing and it does have to do with the inner child and it does have to do with psychic development and commute free freedom of speech. Just like kids, they just say the darndest things, you know, <laughs> freedom of speech and <laughs> creativity, um, random inspirations, fun, right? Playfulness. <laughs> and uh, I see the inner child within you and a lot of uh, walls kind of, uh, I mean, they're like bricks, but they're like walls and they're kind of floating, but they also feel like separation. They're kind of, I mean, like this inner child is shielded and it shouldn't be, I mean, it should be free flowing, just like energy, just like breathing, just like water. Inner child should be free flowing. Man, makes my skin kind of itch on my shoulder and the back of my head. Mm. All right, what's the next thing here? Some some weird object. I still see the inner child looking back at me. Um, I still feel a little bit of a barrier and the freedom of expression of that inner child. And there's something that kind of comes out from your heart portal and it kind of opens and closes itself. And it's kind of sharp at the end, and then it just keeps opening and closing itself. Okay. This is not a night. This is not about something warm and fuzzy by any means. And when I try to pull it all the way out, um, it creates a, a real weird uh, energy around the head. And there's anger involved. Uh, placing one hand on the throat here. And I'm turning this golden, this object. It's just like a metal color, steel. Just turning it golden. And I'm telling you, you need to have much higher opinion of yourself. You need to say that to the mirror. I'm still doing this, but I'm telling this part of you, I need to you to tell yourself in the mirror that I, I see the value in you. I have a really high opinion of you. The reason why I have a high opinion of you, which is you saying this to yourself, is because. And now tell yourself why you have such a high opinion of yourself. You deserve to hear it, but you also deserve to uh, say it, hear it. Process it, feel it, become a part of it, experience it, know it, live it, be it. Be the high opinion of yourself. So there's a self-esteem thing going on here. Is it self-esteem or is it self-confidence? It's a self-something. And it does need to be nurtured. I would say it's a little bit of both. 
Okay. Okay. I'm back in the room with the numbers and the numbers are starting to relax more and they're kind of falling gently, not just collapsing, but falling gently to the ground. And I start to disappear all the numbers. So they just evaporate and now we have so much more to work with than just numbers. We have everything to work with. There's a pillar in the center of your mind um, right, right where the, so crown chakra gets to sort of like, let's just say there's a pillar that goes straight in the center of your head and straight down and through your mind. So it's just right in the center of your mind and all these uh, numbers that just disappeared and it's just an empty space with this pillar in the center. It's brown. It looks like it's kind of made out of a cardboard, but it's a uh, smooth cylindrical. And you, you start to feel a bit emotional and you desire to know, know more about this. And it's like we're peeling away kind of like a cardboard paper and we're peeling it away and it's, a, it's around everything. So we're peeling it away so we can see more. And it's time to let the pillar go as well so we can open this up even more. And you say the pillow or pillar is necessary so that the roof does not collapse. It's important to that it stays there to hold it up and um, hold your crown chakra up. I'm not sure what it's holding up here, but that's what you say to me. And I say, well, let's just try to make it just, we'll just make it disappear for a moment. We'll just see what happens. And then if you feel strongly that uh, it definitely needs to be there, then we can always put it back. But I have a feeling you're going to appreciate it disappearing. I really do. Okay, I will say it gives your heart a flutter. And yeah, it's moving a lot of stuff again. Oh. Okay, it's just like, oh man, it's like moving a lot of stuff and it's all orange in color. It's all orange and kind of a pinky, pinkish color, orange and pink. <sighs> so it's just like still moving. It's like, and it's just like moving all over the place. And it's going round and round and round and round and round and round you. And it's breaking up and breaking off now. And you kind of feel, I mean, you just kind of feel, I see a woman who's sad looking down the ground and she feels like a failure. She's not a failure. I don't, is the failure the right word? At, at this time, yes, I'll just say she feels like a failure, but let's keep examining. If she's got a brown dress on, she's kind of Cinderella-like, um, brown dress, but the, but she's, I mean, she just seems like a, she has brown hair, very basic uh, female uh, figure, brown dress, kind of makes me think of like a paper bag. So it's not, it's like got a shabby nature, but it's made out of a fabric. So she's kind of wearing a brown paper bag, but it's fabric. And it just is a Cinderella like essence to her. And she's disappointed in herself. She feels like she's never going to get this right. She's never going to figure it out. And I tell her, you're more there than you've ever been before. And sometimes we need to go in this direction. We're going towards door number one. Then when we get to door number one and so much is revealed and we realize, oh, wow, I think I was wrong. Uh, I don't think door number one was exactly the right direction, but yet it was. It was absolutely the right direction. Now we can try door number two. And we get halfway to door number two and then a huge distraction comes, blows everything up, and now we have no doors for a while. <laughs> and we wonder what happened and why and what did I do to make all of this happen? Next thing you know, doors are growing again and you have options. And suddenly you look back and you say, whoa, look at all I've achieved in my life. I'm so much further along than I ever have been before. And it's 
Wonderful. Okay. So this part of you that feels disappointed, it feels like um, it's been dabbling in all the right things, but it's as if um, it's realizing it didn't um, quite figure it out right is kind of how it's translating it. That um, I've done all of this, but I feel like you're telling me that I didn't get it right. And now I got to start from square one again. It's like, no way, no way. You actually have gotten everything right because you needed to know all of this stuff. You needed to experience all this stuff. These are tools in your little toolbox. And you're going to be able to reflect on all these tools as you continue to develop your psychic ability. You need to, to continue to grow as a human being. And you continue to grow in everything in your life. It's great. You did a, you've, you're doing a great job. She's uh, really down on herself. She's really, has, I mean, way too high of expectations. She expects a lot of herself, but um, struggles to get even close to what she's trying to achieve is kind of how she feels inside. Okay, I'm bringing the mirror into the center of your mind. And this girl with the brown dress, I'm having her now stand in front of the mirror. The other version of you was wearing a green dress and she looked like a fair maiden. She had a, a really pretty strawberry blonde colored hair and it was very long and straight. She looked like kind of a medieval princess or something. Uh, but now a totally new version of you in this brown dress looking in the mirror. Let's see what she sees. Well, she's not pretending. She chooses to see herself exactly as she is. And there's a tear that goes down her cheek. She wants to be more vibrant, energetically more vibrant, more energetically vibrant, more colorful, more like the medieval girl that had no reflection in the mirror. That's who, more colorful like her. No wonder she didn't have a reflection because she wasn't really you but who's to say she's not you you know it's just how we choose to believe that we are you know so let's see this is really important here because i feel like now that we're getting into this more um down to earth you in the center, as the center of your own mind. So within the center of your mind is the most down-to-earth version of yourself. Doesn't that sound way more precious than a bunch of numbers? That sounds so much more special. No wonder we were having a hard time getting anywhere with all that. Because we needed to bring the most down-to-earth you into the center of your own mind. That should be the pillar of your mind. You should be building the foundation on the most down-to-earth you that you've ever been. She just doesn't see how special she she is as being so down to earth. And she is down to earth. I mean, she's got this kind of haggardy brown dress on. She's not like a cool, she got dirt on herself, you know. She's barefoot, but I actually think she's very natural. And there's something appealing about that. Like she lives in the forest or something in a little house. And so it, I don't know. She just looks more natural to me. This is helping a lot. And it's actually bringing some, some roots up and out. These are not very nice roots. On the other side of the mirror and beneath the mirror itself, there's uh, roots coming up and out of the floor of your mind. And it's not a nice, it's like a gross root, okay? It's not a nice root. And it kind of looks um, looks like a rotten potato with, with legs. And that rotten potato with legs is, makes you want to like... <laughs> It makes you want to go eh. <laughs> like a gag me with a spoon or something. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel awesome at all. I just feel like, ew, like a gross feeling. <sighs> like I ate something that I regretted eating because I found out that somebody spit in it and I ate it. That's how it makes me feel. And I want to cry. And this is almost out. It's like a meatball with legs. 
And so Archons, they're, you know, I, they're not like all evil or anything, but there, there are some energy frequencies that are squid-like and these kind of remind me of those where they just get kind of interconnected to our many layers and they create little a little beacon of learning. So it's like some got lodged in there, um, which will challenge you with in the self-love department, okay? But getting those out is going to fill that space with the uh, ability, the strength to really shine brighter, okay? They're our friends too. They're all, everybody is helping everybody. So no matter what, it's all good. And so this is coming up and out and, uh, oh man, it's like, wow, wow, there's more coming up and out and it's like, eh, I don't know, I've like got to keep rubbing my face. Good. Oh, your energy is like really moving a lot right now because you're choosing to see this where you didn't see it before because you were just filling it with numbers when it really was a distraction from what you really needed to look at. And I will say everything is in the right direction. So don't judge any of this as like going like it, disappointing or anything because I see this as brighter than it's ever been, better than it's ever been. It's more true in nature. And uh, so I will, I'm just going to hang in there for a little bit longer. I, I see a lot of these meatballs with legs come out, coming out. And it's like, a, um, it's like we found a secret room. So here we are in the attic. Whoa, what's this weird hatch? Whoa, I didn't know this room was in here. Some secret room. And I had to get in the attic to get to it. And it's all dark in here. This is like a closed off dark room where there was a lot of spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> And it's kind of, um, again, sadness. There's just so much sadness. Have you, I mean, have you gone through a lot of sadness in your life here? Because this, I feel really sad in here. And I just feel really sad. And it's kind of like, is it burnt in here? It doesn't feel like it's been burnt. Maybe it's moldy. Maybe like wet wood that's been wet for a long time and it hasn't had time to breathe or to dry out or air out. So it's just gotten moldy. Kind of feels that way. And sometimes it feels like you want to go in here and just kind of feel the sadness of it. In an odd way, you have a part of yourself that feels like home in the sadness. And so you linger here and you're receptive to the frequency of this. But it's not a healthy, it's, it's a, this, we can clear this out, okay? And it's time. So I ask you, um, what would you like to give to this room to brighten it up? Uh, an eyeball. You want an eyeball to go in here like a eye and so there's an eye and it's just going into the center of this room and the eye starts to blink and a woman comes out from the shadows and she has this one eye but it's just on one side of her and her face is very much odd it's like an anteater but the mouth comes up um and towards you and it has lips like a mouthpiece like a trunk of an elephant because but it comes up and forward um, she has kind of a, a oval shaped head with some hair that hangs down. One eye on one side. Very strange looking face. And she doesn't know where, how to speak. Uh, it's almost like this trunk with the mouth on it doesn't necessarily work. Um, but it puts your, her mouth in your face as though she could say something right in your face and it does, doesn't seem to work. And it feels like her mouth is actually hidden underneath the, the snout, like the elephant. But she doesn't use that mouth. I just go and give her a big hug. I tell her, you're, you're wonderful. You're absolutely wonderful. And if you, if you feel that it's time for you to start working on speaking, then, then say that. Say that or acknowledge that inside your heart. Maybe you don't know how to say it yet, but you can acknowledge it in your heart. 
Boy, she has a lot she wants to tell me. Oh, man. Um, it's difficult stuff. I give her a big hug and all the difficult stuff. It's sort of coming through the, the woodwork here as sort of like bugs, like cockroaches. And I can hear like thousands, millions, like, like, like gross insecty noises. And so I'm just pulling them all into this orb. And then I'm just pulling this whole place into this orb. I'm going to send her somewhere else. But we just pull all of this sadness and all these gross insects and all this moldy wood into an orb and then we're just going to set that orb free okay it needs to go somewhere else because you don't need to be connected to it that will at least um give you a, a step in the right direction here that's already feeling a lot better and here she is standing in the attic not really sure what to do she looks like a very strange elephant woman and she has yellow, or like pink cheeks, like circular pink cheeks, like a clown elephant. Were there clown elephants in Dumbo? Like in the actual Disney movie? Like did they sometimes have elephants like clown elephants? I, I, th I think of Dumbo a bit. Dumbo is a very sad movie, even though it has a wonderful ending where he conquers all of his life challenges. I think Dumbo is like the epitome of, of what life can be like as a human being. And it's, it's so sad. Um, but we can find ways to help each other and to help each other see how special and wonderful each other is. Just like the little mouse did for Dumbo and Dumbo realized within himself and all the blackbirds that came to help too. And even the spirit of Dumbo's mother that passed away that you know was there with Dumbo the whole time. And something about this um, really brings up a lot of sadness. And so that too is just coming out, okay? This was a super great session for you to explore. And it's really to open you up and to heal some of this stuff. Wow. All right, I'm just I'm just going to say all that and uh, thank you again for the opportunity to work with your beautiful soul and thank you for your open-mindedness to share for others. Um, to experience you and the wisdom spirit has to share and for those of you watching if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com i hope you all have a great day